بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مائی نیم از شائستہ جبی آئی ایم اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر ان نیوٹریشن اینڈ ڈائٹیٹکس ڈپارٹمنٹ ان رانا لیاقت علی خان گورنمنٹ کالج آف ہوم اکنامکس نا ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈلیور دا لیکچر ان دا ٹاپک انفینٹ نیوٹریشن کنڈیشن اینڈ انٹروینشن نا دس ٹاپک از کورڈ انڈر دا کورس نیمنگ نیوٹریشن تھرو دا لائف سائیکل نا دس کورس وی آفر ان بی ایس سیون سیمسٹر اینڈ بی ایس ایٹ سیمسٹر The key nutrition concept of this presentation is infant who are born preterm. Now the preterm term we have already discussed in the last chapter that the infant who are born at 34th week of gestational or later such an infant is called to be as the preterm infant. So we are talking about that the infant who are born preterm or sick. in their early life often require nutrition assessment that nutrition assessment is very much in important for such infant and the interventions that ensure that they are meeting their nutrition needs for growth and development now the second concept early nutrition services and other interventions can improve long term health and growth among infants born with a variety of conditions and number 3 the number of infants requiring specialized nutrition and health care is increasing due to the improved survival rates of small and sick newborns we are talking about especially the uh, in usa so we are discussing the figures and the percentages with that of usa now the key terms of the chapter is number 1 low birth weight now the abbreviation used for the low birth weight is capital l b w according to who the birth weight of infant of 2499 grams or less regardless of the gestational age that is less than 2500 grams such an infant is called to be having a low birth weight then next term is very low birth weight again regardless of the gestational age if the infant is weighing less than 1500 grams so such an infant is having low very low birth weight and extreme low birth weight which is less than 1000 grams and the abbreviation for extreme low birth weight is l e l b w infant at risk advances in health care have reduced infant mortality in usa The advances in new natural health care have increased survival of infants who were preterm, low birth weight and or cro with chronic conditions. The overall US infant mortality rate has been decreased to 45 degree between 1980 and 2006. The health care system has been more successful at saving ill infants than in preventing preterm births, low birth weight or chronic conditions. The cost of the preterm births are not only the longer stay for 
care after birth but also cost over the first year of life which are more than double from higher rates of physicians and hospital visits the number of nutrition the number of infants requiring nutrition service is increasing in large measures because of advances in neonatal intensive care the nutritional needs from preterm infants continue to differ from those of the full term infants well past infancy and they are found to correlate with health into the adulthood infants with genetic disorder malformation or birth complications have also benefited from advances in treatment and are less likely to die in infancy however they are more likely to have chronic condition with increased need for medical nutritional and educational services in later life regardless of what condition is involved these nutrition questions are likely to be asked that how is the baby growing next is the diet providing all required nutrients and how is the infant being fed such assessment are needed by three main groups of infants the uh, in depth nutrition assessments are needed and uh, for those infants who are born before 34 weeks of gestation and uh, in next the infants born with consequences of abnormal development during pregnancy and infants at risk for chronic health problem that risk may come from the treatment needed to save their lives example of the condition is increased risk of seizures etc energy and nutrient needs energy needs may be the same more or less depending on to the special needs increased calories required for difficulty in breathing that is during infection temperature regulation that is during fever recovery from surgery decreased calories recommended for spina bifida or down syndromes energy needs recommended according to the american academy of pediatrics suggest that 120 calories per kilogram for preterm infants and for recovering infants we need as much as 180 calories per kilogram now the european society for gastroenterology and nutrition gives the calorie range of about 95 to 165 kilocalorie per kilogram protein requirements 1.52 to 2.2 grams per kilogram adequate if growth or digestion are not affected 3.5 grams per kilogram for preterm or recovering from illness 4 gram per kilogram may be needed for extreme low birth weight infants now the sick infants may require forms of protein in which amino acids are in short chain such as hydrolyzed protein or the single amino acids the infants need protein that has been broken down are those with metabolic disorders total protein may be limited and partially replaced by mixtures of specific amino acids for infants with pku meat 
and dairy products intake have to be limited because these foods contain too much of the amino acids acid phenylalanine fats requirement provide up to 55% calories from fats medium chain triglyceride that is mct beneficial for very low birth weight and extreme low birth weight infants because of low pancreatic and liver enzymes now these enzyme system may also be impaired in sick infants naturally occurring long chain fats in breast milk may be supplemented with medium chain fatty acid for sick infants and medium chain triglycerides do not require bile for the absorption so they are preferred the mct oil can be added to different to uh, enhance or to ensure that the added calories from fat are available the additional the essential fatty acid that is alpha linoleic acid and linoleic acid as well as joco hexano acid that's that is dha and arketonic acid that is aa are also important and provide in the breast milk vitamins and mineral requirements vitamins and mineral requirements may be needed additional vitamins and minerals to support catch up growth and during recovery from illness human milk fortifiers provide additional calories and nutrients preterm infant formula may have higher amount of vitamin and minerals growth tracking growth in infancy is usually a reassuring sign that sufficient calories and nutrients are provided this growth can reflects nutritional status for most of the infants now the additional methods which are used for the specific conditions are number 1 growth charts using growth chart for specific diagnosis such as down syndrome growth chart etc biochemical indicators looking for biochemical indicators of tissue stores of nutrients such as iron or protein and of electrolytes such as potassium and sodium number 3 body composition noting indicators of body composition such as taking body fat measurements these can be used to show calorie intake is not limiting growth because fat stores are adequate next that is head circumference special attention to indicators of brain growth such as measuring head circumference which may explains that short stature or other unusual growth patterns next that is medication impact on growth considering med medications that change weight gain appetite or body composition that is the side effects of the medication can explain rapid change in weight gain using treatment guidelines or published protocols including disorder specific weight gain graphics and recommendations instead of standard growth chart nutrition for infants with special health care needs health conditions in infant interfere with growth and development 
nutrition plays an important role in three ways. Number one, preventing illness. Number two, maintaining health. And number three, treating conditions in infancy. Nutrition tends to become more important over time to maintain growth if conditions are chronic and impact feeding. Nutrition assessment documents these concerns and nutrition services are provided based on the assessment. Common nutrition problem. Nutrition risk to development. Developmental delay is used to describe a wide range of symptoms that reflect slow development. Symptoms that are related to nutrition are very common and these symptoms include that the infants who are growing slower than expected for age or have a difficulty in feeding such as refusing food from a spoon by eight months of age. An example is a two month old infant who does not have the feed properly. This is the family and the mother supposed to be that the child is not well and the mother's position is not fine. That's why the child is not having the feed properly. But after the fourth month, by the fourth month, when the weight gain is slower than expected, so now the growth concerns and the feeding concerns are interacting. It is not clear if they are separate or related and these concerns are sufficient to request an evaluation for eligibility for intervention services. Several months, after several months, various services has been put into the place and it may still be unclear that if these nutrition problems are from development, a health condition such as the heart murmur or the interaction of both. In any case, the infant fits the category of the child with a special health care need that allows the family to benefit from nutritional, medical and developmental intervention without requiring a specific diagnosis. Infants generally are not old enough to have a specific diagnosis related to development such as mental retardation or autism. But in the case of Down syndrome, down syndrome is an example of a condition in which developmental delay is noted in infancy. Down syndrome prevalence is about 13 cases per 10,000 live births. Nutrition concern with infants who have Down syndrome are feeding difficulties related to the weak muscles in the face and overall high risk of overweight and constipation. Heart and intestinal condition are more common in infants with Down syndrome. So the nutrients uh, need may be increased if the surgery is required. This is also an example of chronic condition in which Nutrition problems such as overweight increase over time if prevention and maintaining health are not addressed. Growth requires close monitoring to identify and prevent overweight starting in infancy. Infants with Down syndrome love to suck and have things in their mouth so much that it is easy to overfed them. 
development of movement occurs at a slower rate with lower physical activity which also can contribute to overweight giving parents their own copy of down syndrome growth charts for infant is recommended after the diagnosis it is confirmed these charts may be helpful in recognizing typical growth and preventing overweight early this special growth chart are available from places that serve children with down syndrome such as developmental or genetic clinic in major medical centers now over here we have to just keep this point in mind that not all children with developmental delay in infancy have developmental disability later for example an infant with breathing problem now if the infant have the breathing problem and may be slower to grow and to coil as a result of his higher calorie needs during the first year of life such an infant may show developmental delay in the motor skill but by the age of 3 he will have improved in overall health and have catch up to others in motor skills he would not have a developmental disability other examples are infants from high risk pregnancies such as those born larger for gestational age as a result of poorly controlled gestational diabetes many infants require short stays in the in intensive care unit for glucose regulation and some have long term risk for development some infants with developmental delay continue to have slower development over time after infancy when standard testing and evaluation can be performed the term developmental delay may be replaced with a more specific type of medical and developmental diagnosis severe preterm birth and nutrition incidence and prognosis about 60000 infants in usa born with very low birth weight each year the survival rate is 90% infants with birth weight near 1500 grams have gestational age from 28 to 32 weeks and a survival rate is almost 90% whereas the infant with extreme low birth weight have weight less than 1500 grams and have gestational ages ranges from 23 to 28 weeks despite advances in the care of such infants disabilities such as delayed development is a common outcome in extreme low birth weight infants attention and learning problem in school age children are at higher rates than in children who were born at term although the majority of the children who were extreme low birth weight do not have the disabilities nutrition problems resulting from very low birth weight and extreme low birth weight preterm births are addressed as they present the initial problem after birth is that the newborn cannot nurse like a full term infant and most requires respiratory support to breathe getting adequate calories and nutrients into the preterm infant requires 
nutrition support. Usually the first is parenteral feeding and then the enteral feeding method. Now the parenteral feeding is delivery of the nutrients directly to the blood stream and enteral is the method of delivering nutrients directly to the digestive system. It contrasts to methods that bypass the digestive system. All newborns have high metabolic rates and they will use fat stores and the protein in tissues and muscles to meet glucose needs if consumed calories and nutrients are not sufficient. Providing sufficient calories and nutrients to meet requirements and preserve ingested protein and calories for growth is the goal but it may be difficult and take more time than expected in sick and recovering infants. Food safety. Preterm babies with immature immunological system are more prone to infection. So effort has to be made to ensure that the feeding do not be contaminated. The rate of feeding preterm infants is often much slower than that of the full term infants. So contamination of the feeding equipment increases with time. So the care must have to be taken and the consequently hospitals have the policy requiring them to change the feeding often such as every four hours. How the sick babies are fed? Gastrointestinal upset is a response to many conditions in newborn. The intestines are the initial problem or not. Very low birth weight, extreme low birth weight and sick infants are especially vulnerable to problems related to the gastrointestinal tract. Such problems directly affect that how calories and nutrients are provided as well as the composition of the diet. For example, if a newborn gets an infection, an early sign may be inflammation of the intestine. As a response, the method of feeding the infant has to be adjusted. The inflamed or damaged area may slow or interrupt typical intestinal muscle movement resulting in signs of increasing illness. Blood loss from the intestines is a sign of necrotizing enterocolitis, a serious condition in the neonate. When this occurs, Oral feeding is stopped and replaced by parenteral nutrition. Conditions that require enteral feedings are gastrointestinal reflexes, constipation, spitting up, vomiting, etc. In small and sick newborns, these gastrointestinal conditions may represent slow or uncoordinated movements of the intestinal muscles and these conditions do not rule out enteral feedings. Enteral feedings stimulate the intestines and help them healthy. Now there are different types of enteral feeding tubes and uh, they have different names. Now the very first which I am going to give you the definition is oral gastric feeding. Now in 
oral gastric feeding and this is a form of enteral nutrition support for delivering nutrition by tube placement from the mouth to the stomach next one is transpyloric feeding form of enteral nutrition support for delivering nutrition by tube placement from the nose or mouth into the upper part of the small intestine next gastrostomy feeding is a form of enteral nutrition support for delivering nutrition by tube placement directly into the stomach bypassing the mouth through a surgical procedure that creates an opening through the abdominal wall and the stomach and the last one is the jejunostomy feeding it's a form of enteral nutrition support for delivering nutrition by tube placement directly into the upper part of the small intestine what to feed preterm infants breast milk is recommended source of nutrition for preterm infants and depending on to the infant's birth weight and health status breast milk may be insufficient in nutrients unless supplemented by human milk fortifier and or other sources of calories such as mct oil if not fed modified breast milk or nursing the infant's source of nutrition may be cow's milk or soya bean based formulas whey protein is a predominant form of protein from cow's milk is also recommended because its amino acid profile is closer to that of the human milk now infant formulas for the preterm infants are also available and after the child has been uh, discharged from the hospital and the breast milk is not available they provide the higher calories and nutrient levels that a small infant need compared to the term infants a standard formula that is 20 calories per fluid ounce can also be used for preterm infants modified in a manner similar to that of the breast milk to boost calories and nutrients high calorie formula such as 28 calorie per fluid ounce may also be appropriate for some infants infants with congenital abnormalities and chronic illnesses infants who are not preterm but require neonatal intensive care may be at risk for chronic illnesses about half of the babies in neonatal intensive care units have normal birth weight and experience lower mortality than low birth weight infants they tend to have a high rate of congenital anomalies and often require rehospitalization these infants need more nutrition services than typical infants because their growth and feeding development require close monitoring and interventions now the congenital anomalies include gi tract disorder diaphragmatic hernia now diaphragmatic hernia is the replacement of the intestine up into the lungs tracheoesophageal atresia now tracheoesophageal atresia is an incomplete connection between the oesophagus and the stomach and cleft lip 
and palate. In cleft lip and palate, the upper lip and the roof or the mouth are not formed completely. Infants with genetic disorder. Infants diagnosed with genetic disorder near birth are a small subset of infants with congenital anomalies or chronic condition. They also fit in the category of infants which in which special health care is needed. The expanded use of prenatal genetic test has the consequences that some families know ahead of the time that the baby has a specific condition at birth and they start taking the steps and treatment has been started by the special diet nutrition therapy right after the birth. Now the very first genetic disorder which we are going to discuss is galactosemia. Now this is a galactosemia is a classic um, genetic disorder occurs when an enzyme called galactose 1-phosphate artery transferase is missing or not functional. This liver enzyme is responsible for breaking down galactose into glucose. Galactose that is a sugar byproduct of lactose found in breast milk and cow's milk and other dairy food products. Next one is the maple syrup urine disease. This is a rare genetic condition of protein metabolism in which breakdown by product build up in blood and urine causing coma and death if it is untreated. The other genetic conditions managed by the diet or require, requiring restrictions or supplemental levels of nutrients identified in infancy by usually the more severe form of the same condition that can be found in children and adults. The conditions include number one urea cycle. Now in this urea cycle disorder require protein restriction. Fat related disorder requiring restriction on specific fatty acids. Carbohydrate related disorder requiring restriction of type or timing of the carbohydrates. Overgrowth disorder presenting an early obesity renal genetic disorder managed with a protein restricted diet to delay and stage of renal disease and the last one is the bone genetic disorder the bone genetic disorder responsive to calcium and vitamin D supplementations feeding problems infants who were born preterm or have chronic health problem tend to be more irritable and less able to signal their wants and needs compared to the healthy infants feeding difficulties are reported in 40 to 45 percent of the families with very low birth weight infants Children with developmental disabilities have more frequent feeding problems as high as 70% that may or may not be identified in infancy. Now the table which is on page 281 in your book 
that gives the signs of feeding problems in high risk infants. Now this table is divided into two parts in early infancy and the late infancy. Right from the birth up to the six months of age, the first category and in this the author has identified some of the feeding problem that the very first is baby has a weak suck and cannot make a seal onto the nipple. Baby appears to be hungry all the time due to the low volume consumed per feeding. Extended feeding times are seen with the baby napping during the feeding despite efforts to keep the baby interesting in the feeding and the last one of the first category or the first six months is the mother is not sure that the baby is swelling although she is appearing to suck and the other later infancy signs are the baby cannot maintain good head control while being fed from a spoon the baby resists spoon feeding by not opening her mouth when food is offered the baby drinks from a bottle but does not accept baby food after repeated attempts next one baby resists anything in the mouth except a bottle breast nipple or pacifers next the baby does not explore the mouth with fingers or try to uh, mouth twice the baby resists limpy and textured food she may turn her face away or push the food away and the baby does not give sign to the parent that clearly indicate hunger or fullness nutrition intervention when feeding problems are identified in infancy, intervention are required to assure growth and development. Interventions may include any or all of the following. Now the very first is to assess growth more frequently or in more depth such as by measuring body fat stores to identify a change in rate of weight or length gain. This would include head growth measurement. Next, monitor the infant's intake of all liquids and the foods by a diet analysis to document that enough calories and the nutrients are being consumed. The infant's intake may be variable due to the illness, congestion or medications that lower the appetite. Next, change the frequency or volume of feedings as needed to meet calorie and nutrient needs. Next, adjust the timing of the nursing, snacks, or meals as needed to fit medication or sleep schedules. Next point, assessing the infant's feeding position and support as needed. This may be important if the infant cannot sit without support. Change the diet composition to improve the nutrient density so that the infant has to expend less effort to meet energy or nutrient needs. Provide parent education or support services as needed so that the feeding environment is positive and low in stress. Observe the interaction of the infant and mother 
at home or in the developmental program to make sure that the signs of hunger and comfort result in a positive feeding experience for the pair. Adjust routine nutrition guidelines to the developmental abilities to the infant even if different from the chronological age or the gestational age. Nutrition services Infants who were born preterm or with special health care needs have access to more nutrition services than do other infants. In USA, following are some of the sources of nutrition services. Federal Disability Program, Individuals with Disability Education Act, Early Head Start, WIC, State Funding from Maternal and Child Care Health. Summary The number of infants at risk for having special health care needs is increasing although the rates of the preterm infants are improving. The key terms LBW less than 2500 grams, VLBW less than 1500 grams and ELBW less than 1000 grams. Infants born severely preterm temporarily require modified forms of protein, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals that are not in breast milk or typical formulas. Growth in infants with special health care needs reflect nutritional intake. Infants with severe preterm birth and congenital anomalies can be fed directly into the stomach or blood stream when oral feeding is not safe. Feeding and eating difficulties are common in infants who require intensive medical care. Educational and developmental services for infants at a risk for special health care needs are encouraged. Genetic conditions which identified in infancy, some require special formulas and close nutrition management to promote standard development.